Hello everyone. This time we are conducting peer sample t-test. It's another t-test that compares the means, but the mean comparison is a little different this time. So what exactly do we compare here when we are comparing the means? So I'm going to talk about the uses first. When we use it, generally we use this when we have some kind of intervention or some kind of experimental data or um, even if it is like you know a, not an experimental data we have collected data in two episodes like first we collected data with a sample and uh, on a variable and then we uh, made some changes maybe we did some kind of intervention we give they give them some vitamins or we uh, give them some kind of uh, motivation or something and now we are testing them again second time in the second episode and then we are checking how that intervention has affected the group or how is this group behaving now so it's basically one sample from where we collect data two times and now we are comparing like if the data if there is any change in the mean of the variable for the data that we have collected within that sample. So I can summarize it in this way that I can say that when do we use pair sample t-test? When we have to compare a value of a variable, variable in a sample um, over time so this is basically when we use our paired sample t-test now to do this I have a data here like where I have purchase intention uh, of the customers related to a particular product before they saw the ad and then a purchase intention of the same group after they had seen the advertisement. So I have two sets of information. One was collected before showing the ad and the second was collected after showing the ad. Uh, let's jump into the analysis, click on analysis, go to compare means, click on paired samples t-test, and I'll reset everything that's already there. I'll put purchase intention before, and then I'll click on purchase intention after. And that's pretty much it. And all I will do is I'll click. Now we have received, received the output in three different tables, but it's very simple. First, it's giving us the purchase intention mean. It's a standard deviation. Then it's giving us the purchase intention after the advertisement mean value and the standard deviation. Now, next, it's giving us the correlation value is if there is any correlation between the two values or not. And then it's showing us the difference in the two values. So, pair differences that you can see here. Uh, the mean is mean difference is in minus y in minus it means that the first value is smaller than the second value that's why it is in minus and then we have the rest of the data so all what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy paste this information I'm going to use my snipping tool nice and handy click on the new and I'll just simply clip off all the data from here and I'll take it to my Word document. Copy and here it goes to my Word. Here is my information. All right. Now, first thing first, what is the null hypothesis of this um, information? The null hypothesis. Now the null hypothesis 
it says h0 it is that the mean of sample 1 is equal to mean of sample p and that's it this is my null hypothesis and what is the mean of sample or what are the samples that we are talking about here in this case it's the purchase intention before advertisement and purchase intention after the advertisement so we have to quickly just simply write this uh, interpretation here so i'll just minimize it a little bit yep here we go now if you look at this data over here now it says that the mean was 3.31 round off before advertisement and it is 3.83 after advertisement so that's exactly what i'm going to write here the results show that mean purchase intention before advertisement was 3.31 you remember we always write plus minus and that's what i'm going to insert here plus minus the standard deviation what's the standard deviation here 0 0.82 0 0.82 as compared to after okay or we should just write here whereas mean purchase intention after advertisement is 3.83 3.83 plus minus plus minus 0 0.77 0 0.77 this is the value that i'm putting here 0 0.77 and that's it that's what we need to report here now next what we have to report here is the correlation okay so we'll say the correlation between the two values is zero point four five eight. Okay, we'll stop. Now, the next result that we are going to write about is whether our null hypothesis is supported or rejected. Now, you know the rules of this rejection of uh, the null hypothesis. The t value should be greater than 1.96. Uh, the sig value should be less than 0 0.05. And there shouldn't be a zero between the lower interval and the upper, upper interval values. Now, all these three situations are met, and that's why our null hypothesis is rejected. So, we are going to write this here the null hypothesis that mean of two samples is same is rejected. Mm -hmm. And when we give our null hypothesis decision, we always have to write the 
reason why we are rejecting it. So we'll say C I brackets open, box bracket open, minus minus point six two comma minus point four two bracket close comma T and then we have to put the degree of freedom. You can see the degree of freedom is two seven seven. 277 bracket close equals to what's the t value it is minus 10.54 minus 10.54 comma p so is the p value greater than 0 0.05 or higher than 0 0.05 you can see it clearly the sig value it is less than 0 0.05 and that's what we are going to report here so that's what we have reported here. So what's the result? Is the purchase intention higher after the advertisement? Yes, it is. And we would write it right away over here. We would say the purchase intention, the purchase intention mean value has increased by 0 0.552 of, and we can't forget the plus minus standard deviation, so we're going to put that here, plus minus sign, and that's here, plus minus, and the standard deviation over here is 0.83, okay? So it's 0 0.83, 0 0.83. The purchase intention value has increased by 0 0.52 plus minus 0 0.83 after the advertisement. was shown to the test group. All right, so that completes our interpretation of our paired sample t-test. So this is all what we have in the paired sample t-test. Hope now you would be able to conduct the test and write its interpretation easily. Thank you, that's all for now.